So I think we'll get started now if that's okay with everyone. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar for best results feedback for students and faculty. I'm Haley Diaz, your host for today's event. And before the presentation, we'll just knock out a couple of Zoom logistics if that's all right. Today's presentation is going to be recorded and it will be distributed to all attendees within the next 24 hours. And there are a couple of Zoom features that we'll be using today and would love your participation in them. The Q&A feature is for any questions you might have for our presenter, Austin, today. I will see those and share, the, share them with him during the Q&A part at the end of the presentation for him to answer. And if we don't get to your question, I, myself or Austin, will make sure to follow up with you after the presentation. And then the chat feature is just for any general inquiries. Um, feel free to post anything in there that you would like to share with the whole group. And so with that all taken care of, let's get started. It is my pleasure today to introduce Austin, um, today's presenter. Austin Rutledge, um, with more than a decade of experience working in education and with a master's of science in education from the University of Tennessee, Austin is passionate about working to improve student outcomes at every level of education. Austin has taught at every level from middle school to university courses, and has spent the last four years working alongside faculty in every possible setting, from primary grade classrooms to medical school laboratories, in an effort to increase student engagement and improve retention. But while much of Austin's expertise lies in technology integration, his focus is always on finding the right pedagogical approach, regardless of the role technology may play. And so with that, I'm happy to turn things over to Austin. All right. Thank you, Haley. Um, I appreciate that. So um, I want to just jump right in and talk about uh, feedback. That's, you know, today's goal is we're focusing on, um, you know, what is feedback and why is it important, uh, especially in health sciences education? Uh, what is the role of reflection uh, when it comes to um, providing feedback for students and faculty? We're going to talk a little bit about both. We're going to focus mostly on feedback for students. Um, but also touch a little bit of, on, you know, some uh, ideas or, or tips for faculty so that they can solicit feedback uh, from students as well. Um, so uh, our objectives, more specifically, um, we, we're going to look at the different types of feedback and some of the qualities that are important in uh, providing um, actionable feedback. Um, the importance of it in health sciences education specifically. And then we're going to kind of wrap up today with some best practices, uh, some uh, hopefully some uh, concrete things that you can go ahead and uh, put into put into place um, at your institution. So what is feedback? Um, I know for myself personally, uh, the more that I learn and study and prepare to uh, talk to people about things like feedback or reflection, um, a couple months ago, we had a webinar on rubrics and you know the more that i prepare to uh you know essentially play the role of teacher with other people the more that i learn myself and i know i even had some misconceptions about you know what really is feedback and when we talk about feedback um one of the things that is really important is that it's not uh necessarily um advice it's not something that has a value judgment necessarily um you know a grades Grades are grades and feedback can be associated with grades, but the grade itself isn't actionable feedback. And so those are some things that feedback really isn't. So let's look at some of the qualities that uh, are you know, wrapped up within this concept of providing feedback uh, for others. And so this is uh, from Educational Leadership uh, published by uh, ACSD. And uh, they're a great institution in terms of um, providing, <clears throat> excuse me, providing really effective uh, and um, I think practical ideas for, uh, you know, improving educational approaches. So first of all, uh, effective feedback is goal reference, as you see here, this, this top uh, hexagon. And so, um, you know, the, making sure that your feedback is not necessarily tied to uh, like I said, grades, but it's actually tied to, you know, what is the goal? Did you achieve this goal? Not did you get this grade, but did you accomplish what you intended to accomplish? Um, and so your feedback should be goal related. You're, you're providing information uh, that's related to their goals and uh, their 
um, success or uh, not success in achieving those goals. Um, the next uh, area here, tangible and transparent. So uh, when it comes to feedback, you do want to make sure um, that the results are tangible, um, that you can, uh, you know, the student can take that and do something with it, that it's not just, you know, uh, vague uh, information that you're providing them, but you're actually giving them something that they can use. Um, and that kind of leads into the next, uh, you know, step here or this next key to effective feedback. And that is, is it actionable? Um, and so, um, you know, if you're not just saying good job, you know, or hey, you didn't really do that right, you know, you're, um, you can imagine what the learner is going to say in response to that. So, okay, well, what, what do I need to do differently? Or how can I make that better? Um, you know, what do I need to change? And so that's where the actionable part comes into that. And then uh, moving on, user friendly, I think it's really important that you, um, you know, to provide effective feedback for students, um, it's helpful if you can establish a relationship with those students and that, um, you know, you're not, um, you're not, you know, kind of speaking down to them, so to speak. And also, you know, think about the, the way that the feedback is presented and, you know, is it uh, something that they can access? You know, is the language something that they can digest? You know, is it user-friendly? Can they take it and actually uh, do something with it? Um, the next, uh, the next part of this is, is the feedback timely? Uh, and so we know that the, the sooner you get the feedback, I know research has shown the sooner that people get feedback, uh, the more they're able to do with it. Um, then it's, you know, it's in your mind, you remember, you know, what you did, you remember what you're getting feedback on and, and how it is uh, related to those goals you were trying to achieve. Um, so the sooner, the better. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit and some ways that Leo can actually help. Uh, with uh, timeliness uh, when it comes to providing feedback. Is the feedback consistent? Um, and so this is something that I think is, uh, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, we had a webinar a couple months ago and we talked about rubrics. And so rubrics, I think, are a great way to provide consistent feedback uh, because the whoever it is that is uh, playing that role of evaluator and the one offering feedback to students, then you know, hopefully they have some type of tool that allows them to be as objective as possible and to not bring in their own subjective, uh, you know, opinions and ideas into that, but just to really focus on the data, you know, what they saw and how to how to provide that consistent feedback. And then ongoing. And, you know, this kind of gets the idea of is it formative? Are you providing opportunities for formative feedback? Um, the more, the better, um, you know, the students can actually see growth over time. Uh, we think that's really important. Um, you know, I'm a big advocate of, uh, you know, this idea, con the concept, uh, Carol Dweck of the growth mindset. Um, we actually work with our kids uh, talking about growth mindset uh, here in our home. Uh, and so I think, you know, being able to provide ongoing feedback so that students can hopefully start to develop and, you know, increase that, uh, that concept of I can, you know, get better over time uh, based upon I can take this feedback and use it and improve my performance. So with that in mind, um, I also, you know, in doing some of the research, found that feedback is often kind of broken into these two camps. Is it informal feedback that maybe happens just in passing or, um, you know, right after class or, you know, after uh, something takes place, you know, just those kind of quick, you know, passing moments. Um, but then there's also formal feedback, which is usually more planned. A student might come into your office and sit down and have a conversation with you, or there might be some type of form that is filled out and, and you know, sent back and forth digitally, electronically, uh, whatever the case may be. But there's really kind of two different ways that can happen. And I encourage you to, to take advantage of both of these forms of feedback, uh, the informal as much as the formal. And, uh, but also keep in mind that in the, I feel like we're very much inclined in those informal uh, opportunities to not, um, you know, that's when we're probably more likely to revert to, you know, saying, hey, that was a great job, or uh, maybe, you know, uh, that wasn't so great, or, you know, you're not really giving them all of those, you're not using all those seven effective keys that we just talked about. So um, I would encourage you to think about that when you're providing either informal or formal feedback. And then uh, moving on from there, um, some different ways that it can be offered to students is you can, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that ongoing formative feedback is 
I think critical, uh, like I said, to, to showing students how they can grow over time. But then we also have summative feedback. Um, and that is equally important, but keep in mind that, you know, once students are getting summative feedback, there's the opportunity for, um, you know, affecting their performance at that point is essentially pass. And so some of the feedback is more of a feedback on, you know, that performance and, you know, hey, you know, maybe you have, you know, future clerkships or future, um, you know, courses in the, you know, in the, you know, in your future and your educational career that you can take and apply this to so you don't repeat some of these, maybe these same mistakes or that you're, you have opportunities for growth. But I'm a big fan of formative feedback. I know some of the feedback is, you know, necessary, but um, don't just rely on that. Uh, use formative feedback as well. And then there's also opportunities for peer and self feedback. Uh, I know Leo has, uh, you know, student uh, evaluations built in where students can actually evaluate other students. Um, and you can make that look different ways uh, in Leo. There's um, opportunities for really quick uh, student uh, feedback, uh, peer evaluations, essentially. Um, and we use the term evaluation in there, but I really like to call it feedback. And so students can offer quickly, you know, just a one question response uh, to, you know, their peers. But there's also, um, you know, more custom ways that you can build larger forms and utilize rubrics like I talked about. So students can use those rubrics as well. And I'm also a huge fan of self-evaluation uh, or self-reflection, self-feedback. And so that students would use those same tools, uh, whether it's a rubric, uh, like I just mentioned, or other uh, evaluation tools, you know, maybe you have a evaluation form um, at your institution on which students are evaluated. Well, give students the opportunity to evaluate themselves in advance so that they can, you know, kind of, you know, think about where they feel like they are, and then they can take the feedback that they get from someone else, and they can use that to see maybe where they had some misconceptions about their own performance. Or um, maybe, you know, I, I know, uh, when I look at the, the work of uh, John Hattie, he, he published the book Visible Learning for Teachers. And what he did is he looked at all different types of, um, you know, uh, approaches to teaching and learning. And he basically ranked the effect. It was just like analysis, meta-analysis of meta-analyses. And uh, he was ranking all of these different effects. And one of the things that he found the most impactful on student uh, learning and retention was students rating themselves. And so I think there's opportunity for students to reflect on their own performance and provide feedback to themselves is really critical for learning and growth. So um, now when it comes to uh, feedback as well, you can put it into, you know, that you have this other dichotomy of positive feedback and negative feedback. And so you could have corrective comments about their past behavior, or you could have affirming comments about their past behavior. And so those positive comments. And you could also have comments that are um, corrective, you know, fo basically focusing on things they should avoid in the future. So that kind of that negative, you know, future um, growth, you know, like, you know, if you want to grow in the future, don't do this. Um, and then you also have those opportunities for affirming comments for future behaviors like, hey, keep doing this because this was good. And so I want you to continue to grow. And so uh, think about how you're framing your feedback and don't just offer positive feedback and don't just offer negative feedback, you know, affirm, but also um, have uh, focus on ways in which uh, students can grow as well. So that being said, you know, as I, as you research and you learn about feedback in education, uh, a lot of the focus, a lot of the studies are done in, uh, you know, K-12, uh, secondary and, and undergraduate. Uh, there's not as much uh, tangible, um, you know, hey, do feedback this way in medical education. I know there was a, a, a kind of a seminal, uh, you know, uh, paper published in 1983. Um, but, you know, since you know, that's kind of like, hey, these are some things you should do. But, you know, in terms of like the effect of that on student uh, learning and growth, you know, there's not as much, um, you know, tangible work that's been done lately. And so what I found is that everybody's agreement that feedback is really important. And they usually point back to these previous studies. And 
I think that it's you know important for us to recognize that there's a lot of ways that we can take some of the the what's been learned in under the undergraduate studies uh, and apply those to those professional settings. So um, thinking about that, uh, it got me thinking about you know not just feedback but also uh, reflection. And you know what I talked about student self reflection. And I, I went back and I started looking at John Hattie's work because um, I know he breaks, he, you know, he talks about feedback, the effect of feedback and the effect of reflection. Um, those are two of those different approaches that he ranked. And what he found, uh, they were both pretty high up. I think one was point, uh, feedback was 0.7. Reflection was actually a little bit higher at 0.75. And so, um, you know, students, and again, that 0.7 feedback is determined on the value, you know, how valuable is that feedback? How good is the feedback they're, they're being given? Um, there's obviously a lot of um, a lot of gray area there for you know how great is the feedback that these people are going to get. But when it comes to reflection, I think that is just as or more important than feedback. And so what I would suggest is to reflect and make sure that students are reflecting on feedback. Take advantage of both of those uh, tools. And so when students are evaluated, have them reflect on that. Have, you know, even if you have a, you know, if you have to require the, a specific uh, tool that they complete, maybe you use a, a student self-evaluation in LEO so that they can reflect on their last, um, their last observation by, uh, by a preceptor if you're talking about clinical education. So I would really encourage you to, you know, not just focus specifically on, okay, I gave you feedback, now it's all on you, but encourage the students to reflect on that and, and you know, think through that process of you know, what does this mean and how can I take it and utilize uh, this information. So um, in terms of some practical ideas, some tips, uh, best practices for, for providing feedback, I would encourage you, first of all, to establish respect. Um, I, I keep going back to John Hattie's work. One of the things that he had ranked, which was a negative impact on student success was uh, this idea of like, you know, you're in confrontation with the students or uh, they don't trust you. Um, and so those are some things that uh, you want to remember that, um, you know, you want to establish that respect with the student, a mutual respect uh, so that they feel comfortable to receive feedback from you. Uh, and, you know, eventually, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, it's important, I think, for faculty to be able to receive feedback from students as well. Um, and then I want you to think about asking questions. So when you are, uh, you know, this kind of goes more to that formal type of feedback that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but when you're giving feedback to students, you know, it's important to communicate with them. And when we all know when you're communicating, you're not just, um, you know, the only, you're not the only one speaking, right? You're going to ask questions and you're going to listen. And so, asking questions of the students and listening to those responses, I think is really important because as, as you're listening to them, they're, uh, they're answering your questions, they're reflecting. And so ask them, you know, what did you think about your performance? You know, how, how do you feel like that um, would have uh, been different if X, Y, Z happened? And so I think having those questions built in is really, really helpful. And so when I say ask questions, there are a lot of different ways you can do that. And there's a lot of ways that formal feedback can happen. Um, you see on the screen here, there are a few different places in Leo where you can leave comments for students. You can leave comments for a student on a grade. You can leave comments for students on an assignment that's submitted. That's uh, you see up here at the top, the student got you know 20 points out of you know hopefully 20 points, but um, you can see that there's an, also a, an area here for a comment. And so what I would encourage you to think about, even though those boxes say comments, uh, you can you know, keep in mind that you can ask a question there. You can uh, submit a question to the student and that's a great jumping off point to start that conversation. And then there's also within Leo, we have what we call the academic portrait. And so this is a wonderful area where it's actually not just a place for comments, but students and their mentors can actually collaborate together. They can leave notes for each other. Um, you have the portfolio where documents can be uploaded and downloaded and re-uploaded with, with new information. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity there for students and mentors to, uh, you know, to, 
to work together, uh, essentially. And so some of that feedback can happen in those spaces. Now, the next uh, kind of tip that I would encourage is reflection. And I, and I keep coming back to this, and I think that's because, you know, the more I learned and when I went back and looked at John Hattie's study again and realized that reflection was actually even more important than feedback itself, I think when you are offering feedback to students, it's important to encourage them to reflect uh, on their own performance. And again, uh, just to, to kind of re um, re you know, emphasize, you know, in Leo, you can create what we call self evaluations for students to complete. And this can be done um, what we call at, at the section level. So if you're looking at a course as a whole, you can create uh, self evaluations for students in that space. Or in Leo, you can create events for students within a course. And so you can also have students evaluate themselves within those events. And so it kind of changes who has control over creating and assigning those evaluations based upon the faculty that are involved. But as you can see, there are a lot of different other types of evaluations that can happen here as well. Okay, so the next uh, tip that I would encourage you to do is to provide resources. And so uh, when you are offering feedback to students and you, you come to the point of, okay, the, you know, there is some room for growth that I think that you, you know, uh, you might consider um, learning more about this concept and then maybe provide some resources. I think uh, oftentimes letting students own their, uh, their learning uh, and take responsibility for their own learning is really valuable in that, uh, you know, they're, they're the ones responsible. And of course, in, a, in the professional world, you know, we're dealing with some of the, the, the best students out there. And so um, it's definitely uh, important that we set those expectations high for those students as well. Um, now, there are some ways that you can do that within LEO uh, in terms of providing resources. Um, you can you know, assign different materials uh, for events or for courses within LEO. But one thing that I would, um, uh, and this is kind of, uh, uh, you know, not a lot of people are aware of this. I wasn't aware of it um, the first time I used LEO, but when someone told me that I could do that, I was like, oh, that's awesome. You can actually manage those uploads and assign them to specific people or groups of people within Leo. And so, you know, if you have, you know, a specific, you know, resource that you want one student to look at because, you know, that would be helpful for their, for them improving their performance, you can basically add that material to your event or to your course. And, uh, okay, so I've got, um, you might hear some stuff going on in the background here. The kids are having fun in the other room, but um, back to the webinar. Um, so you can actually manage those uploads and make sure that the right students have access to the right materials. And so that's a really neat feature, I think, in Leo is that you can provide uh, kind of those targeted materials for specific students if you need to. And then the last thing uh, that I would encourage you today, and, and there's a lot more than this. Um, there, you know, if you, um, if you start to look into this, uh, you'll find really quickly that there are so many different, uh, you know, tips and tricks for feedback. And again, many of these coming from uh, undergraduate and secondary education, but I think are very applicable in the professional world. Uh, but the last one here is, is timeliness of feedback, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. And I know in Leo, we actually just re released this feature um, so that now when you approve an evaluation, you have the option of uh, notifying whoever was being evaluated. And so if you have, you know, you see here an evaluation that was summarized and you see the comments from the instructor as well as, you know, average scores and things like that. So you can actually check that box. And so the student's gonna uh, get a notification as soon as that, uh, that is approved. And so it speeds up that process of student getting access uh, to the feedback in a timely way. Um, and so that is, I think, something that is really important in terms of providing feedback, making sure that it is timely. And then, um, you know, really just, you know, I mentioned earlier, there's so many different places in Leo that you can leave comments for students. And uh, when, when you leave those comments, you know, keeping in mind that, that sometimes you might need a narrative comment for you know, an official evaluation. Uh, but if it's a formative evaluation, I would encourage you to think about those comments as a space for starting a conversation, for asking questions of the student, um, for asking those leading questions that will lead to, to thinking on their part and um, the opportunity for that conversation to go further and for you to offer um, more rich feedback uh, for them moving on. And so 
Um, if you uh, came to my rubrics webinar uh, a couple months ago, if you saw that, uh, you saw the same slide, although I just edited the text a little bit. Um, and so uh, when I, you know, when using rubrics, it said focus on growth, not great. So I just changed up the verbiage there a little bit, but I think it is important that uh, we don't get hung up on the concept that grades are feedback. Um, grades are, are, you know, they grades tell you something, but they don't necessarily tell you everything you need to know to get better. And that's what feedback is. Feedback is something that allows you to affect your um, progress towards your goals um, that you set. And so I think those are some of the, you know, keeping that in mind, it might help you with some of those questions that you want to start asking students uh, to jumpstart those conversations about feedback. So I have a few sources here. Um, I know uh, Haley said that the recording is going to go out for you all. Uh, so you'll have access to these. Uh, so I'm just going to skip uh, right past these, but there's some really good sources. I really recommend the, the seven effective keys to leadership down there. Um, and then there's some other articles from academic medicine that I thought were um, really helpful as well. So um, these, again, coming back to the objectives for today. Uh, so uh, you know we looked at the different types of feedback. We talked about the importance of providing feedback in health sciences, especially. Uh, and then, you know, we looked at some of those those tips. Um, so i um, happy to answer any questions you all have. Uh, if there have been any questions that have come in. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah well, there have been some questions that have come in. Thank you again so much, Austin, for an incredible presentation of for best results, feedback from students and faculty. Really appreciate it for such an engaging um, and informative. We did have a couple questions roll in, which is super exciting. Um, and so to start us off, first question is, other than going into the grade book, would there, be, would there be another place for students to be able to see feedback provided in the comments? Okay, yeah. So like in terms of uh, feedback that is associated with the grade um, or comments, I guess, that are associated with the grade. Again, those uh, in, in Leo, those are, labeled comments, but it is a place that you can provide feedback. And to answer that question, uh, there isn't um, at this point. So when students log into Leo, they access the, their course grade book, uh, and then they can uh, go in and they'll see like a comment bubble next to uh, any grade that has um, comments entered. They'll see that little bubble uh, pop up. And so they'll be able to access those comments. That way it's kind of a visual clue that something has been left uh, or that something is there for them to see. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that um, I mentioned the academic portrait. And so um, we really encourage uh, students to make use of that. So what the academic portrait will show is a list of all of their courses and their, their final grade, uh, so to speak, in those courses. Again, there's some optional um, customizable features there, whether you want them to see that final grade or not. Uh, but that is also a place that students can click to access to get right into those courses and see their scores in the grade book. Um, but to answer the, the question, I think it was asked, they, there's nowhere else in Leo that they would go to see that um, in terms of seeing the comment associated with the grade. Gotcha. All right. Thank you for that. Um, another one we had a rule in was, do your learning objectives play a role in or determine how you give your feedback to students? Oh, yeah. So this one, uh, this is a good question, too. I think um, when it comes to learning objectives, um, if you think about it from a um, purely pedagogical uh, viewpoint, um, learning objectives are the goals that we've set for students, right? And so um, I think that that's a great jumping off point for starting those feedback conversations. And so, you know, going back to the learning objectives to talk about, you know, to, to start that conversation, um, I think that that is probably somewhat helpful in, you know, maybe you you're in a situation where you're going to be providing a lot of uh, what I, we would call negative feedback to a student, um, you know, that there's opportunity for them to grow quite a bit. And so, um, but going back and using, uh, you know, concrete information, um, you know, going back again, going back to those seven keys, something that's actionable, something that's tangible. And referring, referring all, all that back to the learning objectives and say, hey, these were the goals. This was the objective. How do you feel about your progress toward that goal? And, you know, use that as a place to, to jumpstart the conversation. Um, but yeah, I, th I think definitely I would, I would refer often back to those when I was speaking with a student, especially when you have those 
formal conversations. You know, like I said, when a student shows up into your office and you you have to, to work on um, playing that role of, of offering feedback. I think we're always trying to always tie it back to learning objectives and being like, hi, here's some really tangible yes. things you can do. So let's throw it back to the notes. <laughs> um, and I think our last one before we get going is that um, someone asked about Austin, you've talked about the role reflection plays in providing feedback. Do you recommend using points as a motivator for students to complete reflective assignments? If so, would awarding students points for reflect reflection for and for completion be sufficient? Hmm, that is a good question. Um, I, you know, I think, you know, there's always that question of like, what should students get a grade for? What they should they not for? What should be expected? Um, you know, I, you know, grades are in a lot of ways, they're just a carrot, right? You know, because ultimately, you know, at least from my perspective, I, I'm not so much concerned that students, you know, get 100% in any course that I teach. What I really want them to do is I want them to learn what I'm teaching. Um, now, sometimes grades are evidence of that, um, but in a lot of ways, grades are the you know ways that we hold them accountable. And so, uh, to answer that question, I think you know if you're in a situation where you feel like you need to hold students accountable for completing those reflective exercises, then you know I think to to offer you know a few carrots or a few points for students, you know that's not a terrible idea. Um, I would. You know, if you could put yourself in a situation where, um, you know, if you create a culture where maybe that's not even necessary, then, you know, I think that maybe is um, the best approach, um, you know, that they're uh, excited to complete their self-reflective exercise because they want the feedback, because they want to learn and get better. Um, of course, you know, I know that uh, in medical school, there's a lot going on. Students are under a lot of pressure. Um, and so, uh, they might not always have that motivation. A lot of times, you know, after they're done with one evaluation, they're probably thinking about the next exam or the next evaluation. Uh, and so um, I think, you know, in some cases, it's probably okay to, to offer a few points for uh, completing some of those exercises because the benefit um, is going to be, you know, relevant down the road. Thank you for that. Okay, so it's as important for the students to have motivation to complete it as the, as the professors and the clinicians to provide motivation yeah, and, and give it. And Haley, I wanted to um, I wanted to end. I did have one uh, thing I wanted to show, and hopefully this will show up okay. right. Um, so on my screen, um, I this was just one idea I had for faculty soliciting feedback. Uh, so this is in Leo, and basically I've taken um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Poll Everywhere, uh, but I've taken Poll Everywhere and I've uh, basically embedded those polls into the event. Uh, so this is like an introduction to pediatrics event. And so um, as the, you know, as the one in charge of this Poll Everywhere account, I can determine what questions students see here. And so uh, this is one of those things I encourage, you know, um, a way for instructors or faculty to solicit feedback from their students. Now, we do have, obviously in LEO, um, evaluations where students can submit formal evaluations, but we also have, you know, ways like this, where this is more of that informal type of uh, feedback that students could offer to, to faculty. And I know some faculty really want that. Um, I know I really value that for my students whenever, um, whatever I teach, I like to utilize some kind of, you know, people, some people might call it an exit ticket or, um, you know, something to do right before you walk out the door. And so, um, you know, this is a way that you could, you know, throw this into the event and just let the students know, hey guys, go online, give me some feedback on, you know, class today and, and let me know if there's anything that you, you know, think I can do better or you thought went really well. So just wanted to throw that out there before we wrap up uh, the webinar today. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Look at Paul everywhere doing great integrating with Leo. Um, so yeah, I think we'll conclude there. Thank you again, everyone, so much for coming to today's webinar for best results feedback for students and faculty. That's our third in our four best series. We hope the information that was presented today has been helpful, super engaging, and we'll make sure to share the recording with all of the attendees and who signed up um, in the next day and follow up with anybody if they have any extra questions. So thanks y'all so much again for everyone's participation and attendance today. Thank you so much again to Austin. An incredible presentation. We really appreciate it. 
So just be on the lookout for some upcoming webinars um, and have a great rest of y'all's Tuesday. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks everyone.